Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with the Shaman Hearthstone run. The deck, I don't think it went turned out very well. We didn't see any lightning bolts. We didn't see any rock biter weapons. We got a forked lightning and a hex, but no, you know, bloodlust or lightning storm. Lightning storm is a very important card. Only one fire elemental. Our curve is pretty high, and then we have a big spike at three mana, which is like the worst place to possibly have a big spike. The first game, we got smashed to smithereens by a hunter. And then in the second game, we crushed a mage pretty bad, actually. So hopefully we'll be able to repeat that against the priest. With all these three drops, it is nice to be second, because if you have two three drops, you definitely want to be the second player. But I actually got a couple of two drops here, so I probably will just coin them out and play them. Might as well get off to a fast start. So um, we're going to go ahead and do the Sun Fury Protector. So the nice thing about this is it survives Holy Smite. If she wants to Shadow Word Pain it, I'm, ha I'm all for that, because first of all, this thing's not that valuable, and second of all, uh, the Acolyte of Pain, I really don't want eating a Shadow Word Pain. Even even though, you know, that seems like the kind of thing it would want to do, because um, then I don't get a card draw off this guy. So we've got a very fast start here. Hopefully we'll then draw into our endgame. Again, over a quarter of this deck is five mana, six mana cards. We've got one of them here. Not the greatest, admittedly, but they're out there. Okay, well, that's annoying. What I'm going to do is play the Acolyte here. And we're going to actually kill off the Zip Master. It does mean the Imp gets to kill off the Geomancer, but I really want that Imp Master to, to, to die. And the Acolyte of Pain is nice to have sitting out and about. Twilight Drake, that's going to be pretty big, actually. 4-6, ouch, that's huge. Oh my gosh, it's really large. Well, let's um, draw a card. There's really no point in playing this guy. Dark Scale Healer, that'll be nice. And he, he can kill whatever he wants, but this drew me a card, and this will draw me a card when it gets hit, so I feel kind of okay about things. He's actually going to give it... Well, the attack bonus doesn't make any difference, so that's just to um, put a 4-4 four, four on the board. And also hit me in the face, not killing my creatures. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. Hmm, what's the best way to handle this? I think... I mean, there's a lot of good options. Suddenly these four power creatures kill all my stuff, so the Dark Scale Healer is kind of un underwhelming. Um, I could play Fen Creeper and hope he doesn't have Shadow Word Pain. Alright, let's try the Fen Creeper. And, okay, we'll swing for five. I don't know if that was the right move. Maybe I should have killed the dwarf, but whatever. I couldn't kill them both, so I figured I might as well get the damage through. He actually has a mind control tech, and he actually steals my best creature. You have motherfucking got to be motherfucking kidding me. I cannot believe that that just happened. Oh, my God. Well, now, of course, I wish I had traded my stuff in for the Dark Iron Dwarf, because then the mind control tech wouldn't have hit me. God, that was, that was fucking retarded. And he's got a heal for himself. This game's pretty much over now. There's just nothing I can do to come back. He's now going to take the time to kill my stuff, including the Acolyte of Pain, giving me a card, but who cares? Silence is actually good. I can silence this Twilight Drake, but with that Taunter, it's just, uh, it's just terrible. Oh, my God. I mean, we'll keep fighting, but... It's looking grim. I mean, really, the 25% chance of getting that Fed Creeper was so horrible, I can't even begin to believe. He's got a Holy Nova. Heal up his dudes. Get the Mind Control tech to kill another creature. And I'm battered low. Yeah, this is fucking idiotic. We're just gonna go ahead and concede. And that was some dumb bullshit. So, yeah, that happens in Hearthstone sometimes. Can't let it get to you. Just gotta, you know, concede and move on to the next game. I'm not gonna give a well played because it wasn't well played. It was just stupid. So, what could I have done differently there? Well, I mean, I could have played around Mind Control Attack, but I really don't think that's a card worth playing around. And I could have traded creatures for the Dark Iron Dwarf. So, that is not not to play around Mind Control Attack, but just to be safe, I guess, and, and kill creatures. I should have played that. And then either the Fen Creeper or the Dark Scale Healer would have both been fine there. But I should have, I should have maybe gotten that. I mean, I could have... I don't know if I should have, but I could have killed off the Dark Iron Dwarf with my 2-2 and my 2-4. And then, um, played Venom Creeper, maybe I would have been okay. Alright, up against another Mage, Dusk. <sighs> so, I'm at 1-2 and two with Shaman. This would be, by a huge margin, the worst result I've ever posted with the class if I were to lose this game. 
We do have a good curve, two, three, and then, well, not really four, but whatever. I'll have something to play on turn four. Um, okay, Let's see what she's got for me. Hopefully a pass on turn one. Yes, that's excellent. Hex is not going to be useful for a while, but against, you know, abominations and things, it can, it can be good later on. Just going to Frostbolt that. Well, that's fine. It's a one for one. And Frostbolt's, I think, in general, much more valuable than that Sun Fury Protector, so I'm okay with that trade. River Crocolisk is terrible. It's terabismal. It's like terrible and abysmal at the same time. She still has the coin. Got to remember that. Next turn, I'll probably make this guy and uh, Totem. Well, now that she's played a secret, I definitely don't want to... Uh, Give her a Harvest Golem if that's mere entity, which it is. Let's make a totem. I wish this were a 3 2 rather than a 2 3 so I could actually kill this thing. Got the 1 1. Damn it. Well, let's actually just hit this. So she can ping the Golem, but the Golem will come back and then that leaves my 1 1 alive and that'll let it kill the River Crocolisk. I got a huge non-bow here with the Abomination. It pretty much clears my team out. So I'm probably not, I'm not actually going to play it on turn 5. I'm not like behind. There's not like a bunch of aggro I need to kill. Probably just play the Golem and a Totem. So she'll trade the Raptor for the, or the Crocolisk for the Golem. And then the Hero ability makes that an even trade rather than a loss for her. Fire Elemental, that'll be nice. Swing, swing, swing. Those aren't actually swings, whatever. Spell damage uh, could be good, but this deck actually has so little spells, it's not actually very good here. The only thing it helps is the Forked Lightning. I don't think there's any other spell here. Oh, there's a Frost Shock that I took because desperate times. Now, I might just win because I play Boulder Fist Ogre next turn, but if she has a Fireball or Polymorph, well, then I might just win because I have a Fire Elemental, but, you know, um, the big the big drops that I've got here are going to be my, my key. This is very irritating because it doesn't die to my three power that I've got going on here. I could uh, fire elemental, and you know what? I will just do that. Clear out her board, keep the control, and if this lives, I can put Wind Fury on it. And don't even tell me this is a good card. We've already seen it lose me a game, so. Well, not lose me a game, but we've already seen it be a dead card in my hand the whole game that I lost, so had it been a real card, I might have been better. Reckless Rocketeer, very good answer to Fire Elemental, so it's 6-drop for 6-drop, but the 6-drop did help me kill off her No Mission Venture, but the No Mission Venture drew her a card, so it's, uh, I'd say it's about even. Go ahead and play the Boulder Fist Ogre. Survives Flame Strike is also a good target for Wind Fury. I could smash her for 14 damage next turn, potentially. I'd love for her to just to play like a Sunwalker here for all, for all of her mana. I don't want her to kill my stuff anymore. All right, well, that is not a Sunwalker, but that is still a good target for Hex. So it shall be Hexed. And I'm not actually going to Wind Fury this thing, because I don't think Wind Furying it is as good. I was playing a creature. Notice if I win Fury, I don't get to play another creature. I'm going to put another creature on the board here. And yeah, 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 mind control tech can go fuck a dog. Sorry, that's really inappropriate. Mind control tech can go suck a dog. There we go. And then I'm ready to win Fury this next turn and basically almost get the kill. You have got to be fucking kidding me. Again, two games in a row. Well, this time, at least I got she stole the totem rather than a real creature. This is why I don't think this is a card that's worth playing around. It's so dicey. Now, she that this being spell damage is bad because, you know, mages with spell damage can do some pretty awful things. Oh my god, that Abusive Sergeant is really clutch. Hang on, can I win the game? Um, okay, let's think very carefully. I can Abusive Sergeant, of course, and then the Harvest Golem would, would kill off the Booty Bay. Then I can Wind Fury, the Boulder Fist Ogre, and swing for 12, plus 3 is 15. It's one option. Now, the other option is I can actually throw the Golem and the Fen Creeper into the Booty Bay, and then Abusive Sergeant on the Boulder Fist Ogre to make it 8, and then give it Wind Fury and Spring Swing for 16. Although I do a little bit more damage that way, I also have to use the Fen lose a lot of health in the Fen Creeper, which I don't think is actually worth it. So we're just going to go ahead and do the Abusive Sergeant there. That's why the Booty Bay is a terrible card. Right, let's go ahead and Wind Fury my Ogre. Swing. Swing. I could swing, get her down to four health, and then play this, and that'll almost kill her, but I'd actually rather just keep her board clear. Make a Yeti. Make, make a totem. 
Now, maybe I should have killed this instead of the Mind Control tech, because now she's got Flame Strike, which deals 5 damage across the board. But the Ogre still survives that, which is kind of awesome. Even after being pinged. That 7 health is just pretty monstrous. So yeah, she needs to kill this and clear out everything else, or else she's going to lose. If she has, like, Flame Strike and Arcane Explosion, she can actually win the game. Hilariously enough, because that, that would clear out my entire board. And then she'd have a massive card advantage. She'd have, like, 5 cards down to 2. So yeah, then in that case, I would say that I should have killed this and not killing this is what made me lose. Because if I hadn't killed the Mind Control tag, if I had killed the Spell Damage Totem, this would have been a 3-6, and then it would have survived all this stuff as well, unless she flung her Mind Control tag into it. That was probably a little bit of an inaccuracy, not killing the Spell Damage Totem against a Mage. Okay, well, so we lost a game because Mind Control tag picked the best creature, and then we won a game because Mind Control Tech picked the worst creature, but the moral of the story is, fuck Mind Control Tech, that card is stupid. Okay. Two wins. I need one more win to be average. I need two more wins to preserve my dignity and continue my streak of never having gone below four wins with the Shaman. Okay, well, finding a new opponent here, taking some time. The game's not bugged, that's nice. This Q is useless as always. Was it really 30 seconds in the Q? Wow. Okay, up against a paladin, Grump Dog. Wow, that's a good name. Well, well named, sir. Actually, a really good opening hand against paladins, because the Stormforge Dax, I don't, I don't even mind killing three recruits with that thing. And the Patriarch is also very good for mopping up recruits, as is the Acolyte, even better. Wow, this is just great. So I'm second, this is a really nice start. So basically, if he has a fast start, and he plays real creatures, I can play Stormforge Dax. If he has a slow start, I can coin out a um, Acolyte of Pain on turn two. Uh, is that worth coining out a uh, Stormforge Dax? I don't think so, but I will actually coin out the Crocolisk. So I can start to get to work on this thing, and then I'll play a Stormforge Dax. The Stormforge Dax, actually, I might not play. Hmm. Because that would stop me from playing the Acolyte the following turn. We'll see what he does. Ooze. Well, okay, now we're definitely playing a Stormforge Dax, because that'll just kill this thing. That's pretty important, I think, to do. Even if it means not playing my 3-drop. So, don't let Paladins keep creatures. I can't kill this thing, unfortunately. I can just pop off the Divine Shield, but that, that'll have to do. Hopefully he doesn't play anything that... He just, hopefully he just makes a Recruit. That's what I want him to do. Just make a Recruit and pass the turn, because that way... I can kill this with my Crocolisk, and I can kill the Recruit with my Axe, and we'll all be good. This is fine. It's still really the same. Actually, I don't know. Wow. Whoa. I think that was a mistake. Because really, here, I'm just going to kill that Geomancer, and then kill the Acolyte and make a Totem. I mean, really, he would have achieved the exact same thing just by making a Recruit, so I think he slightly misplayed there. Anyway, this is a really good start. I would say that I won the opening pretty handily. I mean, he's got four cards to my umpteen scurb jillion, and I'm still holding an axe. Oh my god, that is... Well, it's only two cards, I guess, so it's like an arcane intellect. I guess it's not really that bad. Elven Archer! Who plays Elven Archer? Oh my god. Now, I know some people here would, you know, play the Acolyte and leave the Elven Archer alive, hoping to use the Acolyte next turn to kill this and draw a card. Kids, do not do that. Do not do that, because... This thing could get, like, you know, Blessing of Kings or whatever and put a Divine Shield on it. Just, like, don't do not do things. Don't let Paladins keep creatures. Kill a, kill a Paladins creature, save a kitten. All right, now next turn is five mana, which kind of sucks because I can't play my, like, six drops here and nothing else is actually worth doing. This is a really good drop for him. About to get some more card advantage, killing this Leper Gnome, which is pretty great. Mana Tide? Um, no. I'm going to play the stupid monkey. What this does is it protects my Gnomish Inventor from being finished off by the Stormwind Knight. Note that I'm actually kind of low on health because of um, I hit three things with the axe. But now I should be fine. I mean, he's only got four cards to my, again, umpteen screw bajillion. I'm fine on the board. I can't kill this thing with what I have on the board. But hopefully, like, that's the only, that's, like, the only risk here is that I can't kill this one creature. Yeah, it's got Blessing of Kings. Okay, okay, okay. So it's, you know, a 6, 8, no big deal. Luckily, I can get a 6, 8 with charge as well. Um, yeah, we're just going to do that. 
So what I'm going to do here is take a little bit of a chance. We're just going to kill that recruit. And I'm going to swing at his face. Now, you're saying, Boris, why didn't you kill this thing? I could have killed it with my No Mission Mentor and my Stormwind Knight. But then I would have left the recruit. So either way, I leave a creature alive. Might as well. Well, okay. That's sad. And he has another Divine Favor. Who plays with two Divine Favors? Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, well, that mistake could cost me the game. Because I could have killed this when I had the chance. I risked, you know, him having a Humility effect or something. And he had it. Fork Lightning is not going to help me. I think I just need a Hex, don't I? I mean, is that the moral of the story, or do I play a Sunwalker? Oh, God. If I Hex, I only have four mana left, which isn't enough to do anything. Okay, we're going to play Sunwalker. And I'm just going to trade my creatures here to do that. But I should have just, you know, I should have just killed this when I had the chance. Left him with the recruit. Yeah, that would have been much smarter. I still, that my guy would have survived. I would have had a six-two. Yeah, that was a mistake. I have regret, I have regrets. Anyway, next turn I can play Fen Creeper and hex this thing, so I should be okay. But because of that second divine favor, my God, that's so bad, guys. It's not actually good to play with two divine favors in arena unless your rare picks are really bad. He just got very lucky that um, I had such a fast start, which this deck isn't normally going to have. Truth of a Champion, so you can pop off the Divine Shield with the Truth of a Champion, taking a net of two damage. Then he can kill off my Sunwalker, going down to four health. And this thing, I could have killed it. Uh, well, learn, learn from my mistakes, folks. Learn from my mistakes. And he's going to play that guy. Okay. Mm Alright, this thing just needs to die. So we're going to do that. Kill it. Play a Fen Creeper to stop that thing from being able to terrorize me too much. But if he has another Blessing of Kings, I'd probably just lose the game. Oh my god, why didn't I kill that Stormwind Knight? I just took such an unnecessary risk. I forgot, you know, I just think I just forgot about humility is the problem. That wrecked me so badly. <sighs> Frustrating. Well, I only have myself to blame. He has another Blessing of Kings! Are you fucking kidding me? Well, I have two Spellbreakers in here. So I really should be able to draw one. I haven't, like, seen them very much at all, actually. What is... Oh, my God. You've got to be fucking kidding me. I'm going to lose to the dumbest bullshit in the history of ever. Um, I can't deal four damage because I didn't get any... Well, okay. So what we need to do here... Thankfully, I don't die on the spot. I get to put up some taunts here. And swing. So, he can kill both of my creatures because this thing has Wind Fury. I cannot believe I'm not getting any of my spell breakers. And actually, with a little bit of luck, he can actually just win right now. If he just has, like, a single silence, he wins. But he played two divine... I lost to Divine Favor and Blessed Champion. Oh my god, that's so frustrating. I can't even fathom. Yeah, I lost to two Divine Favors, a Thralmar Farseer... And a blessed champion. I mean, I could have killed off that Stormwind Knight, though. And then I wouldn't have had any problems. But uh, I made one small misplay, and I got punished for it. So we are going to, in fact, have our worst Shaman run ever. Is he going to kill my creature? He is, so I can't kill this with what I have on the board. Fork Lightning isn't good enough, because even if I kill this, the Ogre survives. Um... <sighs> Man, this sucks. Spell damage or taunt would have saved me. I got neither. So, that's it. <sighs> that was retarded. Yeah, I made a mistake and I got punished for it, but then he also played with bad cards and beat me with them. So that's just like extra salt on the wound there. Anyway, uh, two wins with the Shaman. So please like the video if you want to have pity on an old sad soul. Let's go ahead and take a look at our prize. It is 50 gold. That is a lot of gold, and that is quite fortunate. That is way above the curve for two wins. So basically, I break even there as far as, you know, um, the arena is concerned. You just need to get to 50 gold, and that's better than... That, 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 that's as good as spending money at the store. Normal pack. Blizzard, good card. I already got them. I crafted them a long, long time ago from my freeze deck, which then, like, everything in it got nerfed. 
And that's a normal pack for 40 dust. And let's take a sneak peek at our next arena. So now there is no class left in the game, with which I've never gone below four wins. Every single class now, I, I can, I, I've gone below four wins at least once, which is very, very sad to, to have seen that happen now with Shaman. But the next run's going to be Rogue Hunter or Paladin, so stay tuned. I'll see you then.